section 3.2 talks about synthetic division. And so what we have here is something called the division algorithm. And the division algorithm says, let f of x and g of x be polynomials with g of x of a lesser degree than f of x, and g of x of degree one or more. Then there exist unique polynomials qx and rx so that f of x equals g of x times q of x plus r of x, where either r of x is zero or the degree of r of x is less than the degree of g of x. Okay, so there's an easy way to explain this so that it seems uh, easier to understand. Think about taking the number 9 and dividing it by 2, okay, like old school way. So remember when you would do this, like back in elementary school, and we're going to say 2 goes into 9 4 times, that's 8 in remainder 1, okay. So one way we can rewrite this is we can say, how would I check my answer? Remember how we would check our answer? We would take 2 times 4 plus 1, and that's going to give me 9. So another way I'm going to rewrite it, I'm going to write it like this. 9 equals 2 times 4 plus 1. Okay, so remember, the remainder has to be smaller than that number there, right? So do you see right here it says r of x is less than the degree of g of x? It's saying that the remainder is smaller than whatever I'm, do excuse me, whatever I'm dividing it by. See this f of x right here? Think of this as my f of x. See this g of x? Think of that as my 2 the Q is kind of like my 4, and the R is kind of like my 1. All right, that's what, in essence, that's what it means. So what we're going to do here, we're going to do synthetic division. Okay, synthetic division, remember when I drew my box right here, and I kind of drew it this way? This one, I'm going to draw the box a little differently. It's going to look like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the coefficients of these terms. What I mean by the coefficients, I'm taking the numbers in front of the X's, okay? So the number in front of the x to the third is a 1. The number in front of the x squared is a 3. The number in front of the x is an 11. And the constant is a 9. Okay. Now, this part right here, I'm going to divide by using this number. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the sign. So right now it says positive 1. I'm going to write it as a negative 1. Okay. I'm always going to change the sign. So once we've written those numbers out, the first step is take this number and bring it down. That's going to become a 1. Okay, So that first number is always going to drop down. Now I'm going to multiply. Negative 1 times 1, negative 1. And we're going to add 3 minus 1 is 2. I'm going to multiply again. Negative 1 times 2, negative 2. I'm going to add straight down, 11 minus 2 is 9. I'm going to multiply one more time, negative 1 times 9, negative 9, and we end up with 0. This number here, the last number, it was always going to be my remainder. Okay. So now, now that I have my remainder, let's figure out what do these numbers mean. Okay. So I want you to think about this. We took an x to the third polynomial and we divided it by an x polynomial. So if you think of just those terms, x to the third divided by x. Remember, the number here really is a 1. And when I'm dividing, I'm really subtracting my exponents. So 3 minus 1 gives me 2. So this first number is telling me that's the number in front of the x squared. This is going to tell me in f the number in front of the x. This is my constant term. And again, that was our remainder. So there's my answer. Okay. All right, I'm going to do the same thing for the next problem here, okay? So I'm going to take my numbers here, and I'm going to write them down. Remember, the number's in front. So the number in front of the x to the fourth is a 5. In front of the x to the third is also a 5. The number in front of the x squared is a 2. The number in front of the x is a minus 1, and the last number is a negative 3. Remember, with this number here, I'm going to change that sign. That's going to become a negative 1. Okay. All right, so the first step says, let's bring the first number down. That's a 5. Then we multiply. Negative 1 times 5, negative 5. We add them together. That's 0. We multiply again. Negative 1 times 0 is 0. We add straight down. That gives me a 2. I multiply again. Negative 1 times 2. 
negative 2, add them together, minus 1 minus 2, minus 3, multiply negative 1 times negative 3, positive 3, add them together, and I get 0. Remember, the last number is always going to be my remainder. So again, I want you to think about what we did. We took an x to the fourth polynomial, and we divided it by an x polynomial. So remember, that number there is a 1, so when I subtract, I'm left with an x to the third. I'm always going to be left with a polynomial that is one degree smaller than that one. Okay, So what do these numbers mean here? That first 5, that's the number in front of my x to the third. Notice, the number in front of the x squared is 0, so I don't need to write that term. This is the number in front of the x, and this is my constant term. Okay. Oops. And so there's my answer. Okay. Alrighty. Let's do the same thing here. So I'm going to draw my half box, right? And I'm going to start filling in these numbers right here. So 1, 4, 2, 9 and 4, okay? And then recall, I'm going to take this number here, the sign of that positive 4 is going to change to a negative 4, okay? So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to drop down our first number, and that's going to become a 1. And now I'm going to multiply. So negative 4 times 1 is a negative 4. Add them together, that's a 0, okay? Negative 4 times 0 is still 0. Add them together, that's a 2. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Add them together, that is a 1. And negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Add them together, that's 0. Remember, this here is my remainder, right? So again, we had an x to the 4th. We divide it by an x. This here is going to be the number in front of my x to the 3rd. So 1x to the 3rd. We don't have an x squared term but we do have a plus 2x and a plus 1, okay? And we've done our division, okay? So, let's do the same thing. we got a few more to do, and again, I'm, I'm doing a bunch of these guys because I want to make sure that the process and how we're doing these is starting to make some sense, okay? So negative 9, 8, negative 7, positive 2, Remember what we're going to do with this number right here. We're going to change the sign. Excuse me. So if that number is a negative 2, I'm going to put a positive 2 right here. So first step, bring this number down. And now we multiply. 2 times negative 9, negative 18. 8 minus 18, negative 10. Multiply. Negative 10 times 2, negative 20. Add them together negative 27. Multiply 2 times negative 27, negative 54. Add them together, negative 52. Remember, this here is my remainder, okay? So the way I'm going to go ahead and write this out now is negative 9x squared. Remember, we had an x to the third, so it's being reduced by one power, minus 10x, Okay, minus 27. Now, I have this remainder here. The way I'm going to write that remainder is a minus 52 all over x minus 2. And I want to explain why am I writing it like this. Okay, why am I writing it that way? So, let me grab my mouse. I'm going to show you all something here. So, remember earlier when we said when we had 9 and we're dividing it by 2, and we put our 9 here, we put our 2 here, we put a 4, we had an 8, we had a remainder 1. Remember how we would write this as a mixed number? Wouldn't we write this as 4 and 1 half? And we're writing it as 4 and 1 half. That really means 4 plus another half, right? So when I come, see how I have that plus sign right here? Because I'm adding that half back in there. When I'm doing this problem, if I want to, I can really think about this as a plus negative 52 over x minus 2. This is what I was dividing by, and this was my remainder, okay? So the idea is that it works very much the same way. We're doing that 
sort of long division, but we're doing it uh, using this idea called synthetic division. And again, the idea is it's supposed to be a little more of a simpler process. Okay, Hopefully it's working out, but let's continue with this here. So again, I'm going to take my numbers here. Okay, So look, the number in front of the x to the fourth is a 1, a negative 3, a negative 4, a positive 12. Notice how I don't have a constant term. I'm going to put a 0 here, okay? I don't really need to put the plus in front of the 12. But I'm going to put a 0 there just in case I need it, okay? Because I'm missing that term. Then I'm going to take the sign here, which is a minus 2. I'm going to change it to a plus 2. Okay, so the first thing is bring this guy down. 2 times 1 is 2. Add them together, that's negative 1. 2 times negative 1 is a minus 2. Add them together, that's a minus 6. 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. Add them together, it's 0. 2 times 0 is 0, and that's still 0 there. Okay. So remember, this is still my remainder term. Okay. So remember, we took an x to the fourth polynomial, and we're reducing it by 1. So this is going to tell me the number in front of my x to the third. 1x to the third minus 1x squared minus 6x. Alrighty. Oops. Okay, so now let's try the next part here. We're going to fill those blanks in, okay? So the number in front of the x to the third is a 1. Since I don't have an x squared, I'm going to fill it in with the number being 0. Since I'm missing an x term, I'm also going to fill that in with the number 0. And then my constant term is a negative 1. Okay, then I'm going to take this guy right here, and I'm going to change the sign. That's going to become a 1. All right. So first step, bring down the 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Add them together, I get 1 again. 1 times 1 is 1. Add them together, I get 1 again. Multiply, 1 times 1 is 1. Add them together, I get 0. Remember, this here is my remainder. So if we took an x to the third, and we divided it by an x minus 1, which is right here, then we're reducing all these powers by 1. So this is a number in front of my x squared. That's the number in front of my x. And that's my constant term. Okay, And we're done. So guys, I do need to fill in these zeros here. They're kind of like placeholders. Okay, They're kind of like placeholders. Like if I asked you to do this old school way, what is $2 minus, say, 18 cents? You would say, well, let me write it like this, 2.00 minus 0 0.18. And we put those zeros in here because they're placeholders, right? It's the same sort of concept. All right. <clears throat> so now the next part here, we have something called the special case of the division algorithm. It says for any polynomial f of x and for any complex number k, there exists a unique polynomial q of x and a number r such, the, such that the following holds. And it says f of x is equal to x minus k times q of x plus r. It says use synthetic division to divide f of x by x minus k for the given value of k. And then express f of x in the form. And it's given it to me like this here. Okay. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to draw my box. Okay. And I'm going to write the coefficients of these terms here. The numbers in front. 2, 1, 1, negative 8. Okay, now I want you to notice something here. Do you see how it says k equals negative 1? But we're really dividing everything by x minus k. So if I were to write x minus k, and it tells me that k is negative 1, x minus a negative 1, wouldn't that really be an x plus 1? So if I'm dividing everything by x plus 1, do you remember what we do with this sign? We said we change it, right? So it's a minus 1. Now, I want you to notice something. Isn't that the same number that we had right here? So, <clears throat> the name of the game is when it gives, me, gives, gives it to me in the form k equals, the sign has already been changed for me. Okay? If it's in that form, the sign has already been changed for me. If it gives it to me in this form, like we have here, then we said, well, we changed the sign, right? So, the first thing, let's drop down the 2 and multiply it. Negative 1 times 2, negative 2. Add them together, 
negative 1. Uh, let's see. Negative 1 times negative 1, positive 1. Right? 1 plus 1 is 2. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Add them together, negative 10. Remember, that's my remainder. Okay? So I want you to notice how they're asking me to write this. They're asking me to write it like this. So we're going to say, okay, f of x equals, and it says x minus k. So remember, here was my x minus k. That ended up being x plus 1, okay, times q of x. This piece here is going to be my q of x. So remember, if we had an x to the third, this is really the number in front of the x squared. That's the number in front of the x, right? So it's going to be 2x squared minus 1x, you can just put minus x if you want to, plus 2, okay, plus my remainder. My remainder in this case is negative 10. If you want to write just minus 10, that's fine too. Either way is going to be okay. And that's all that it is I'm doing here, okay? All right. Now, there's something here called the remainder theorem. And it says, if f of x is divided by, and again, look what we have here, x minus k, then the remainder is equal to f of k. Okay? So I want you to notice what they're saying. The remainder is the same thing as f of k. I want you to notice what we have in this problem. We have f of negative 3. That's telling me that the number k is equal to negative 3. So remember what it is we're going to do here. I'm going to write my half box. I'm going to take my numbers Oops, that I have right here. There's a negative 4. Notice, I don't have an x to the third, right? We go from x to the fourth directly to x squared. So the number in front of the x to the third is a 0. The number in front of my x squared is a 3, a minus 4, and a minus 5, okay? Since it's already given it to me, and this k equals, that just means that this sign has already been changed for me, okay? Negative 3. All right. <clears throat> so now, first step is bring this number down. And then we multiply. Negative 3 times negative 1, positive 3. Add them together, that's 0. I'm sorry, that's 3. Oh, come on, pen. There we go. 3. All right, multiply. Negative 3 times 3, negative 9. Add them together, negative 6. Negative 3 times negative 6 is a positive 18. Add them together, that's 14. Uh, multiply. Negative 3 times 14 is a negative 42. Add them together, that's a negative 47. Remember, this is my remainder. Okay? So, what I want you to notice here is, oh, come on, my pen is freezing up, guys, hold on. There we go. Look what it says here. The remainder is equal to f of k. So the remainder is f of k. So in this case, the remainder is equal to f of k, which was negative 3, and our remainder is negative 47. So f of negative 3 ends up being negative 47. So the old way we used to figure out how would I find f of negative 3 is we'd come back in here and everywhere I got an x, I'm going to plug in the number negative 3. And I got to take negative 3 and raise it to the fourth power and then make it negative. And I got to take negative 3, square it, multiply it by 3. And I got to take negative 3 times negative 4 and then I got to subtract 5, right? Here we can do this process and whatever the remainder is, you get exactly the same thing. All right, so this problem is exactly like the one we just did. I'm going to draw my half box, and I'm going to fill in my coefficients. 1, negative 4, 2, and 1. Notice, it's already given to me in the form k equals, so I don't have to change my sign. Okay. So first step, drop down that first number. Now multiply. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Add them together, that's negative 5. Negative 1 times 5 is positive 5. Add them together, that's 7. Negative 1 times 7 is a minus 7. Add them together, that's a minus 6. This here is my remainder. 
So my remainder is the same thing as f of k. And in this case, k was the number negative 1. And our remainder is negative 6. Okay. All right. So the next part here in 3.2 talks about potential zeros of a polynomial function. And it says a zero of the polynomial function f of x is a number k such that f of k equals zero. Okay, what this is telling me, guys, in plain terms, is when we divide by x minus k, right, if the remainder, which is f of k, ends up being zero, then that value, x equals k, is what we call a zero of the function. Okay, so let me explain what I mean by that. I'm going to draw my half box, okay? I'm still going to use synthetic division. I'm going to write down my numbers, 2, minus 6, minus 9, positive 4. Notice it's given to me in the form k, k equals, so the sign's already been changed, okay? All right, <clears throat> now drop down the first number. It's a 2. Multiply 1 times 2 is 2. Add them together, negative 6 and 2 is negative 4. Multiply 1 times negative 4 is still negative 4. Add them together, that's a minus 13. Okay. Uh, 1 times negative 13 is still negative 13. Add them together, and that's a negative 9. Okay. So it's asking me, is this thing a 0? Well, is f of 1 equal to 0? That's what it's asking me. And no, it isn't, because f of 1 is equal to negative 9. So if it says, if it's not, give the value of f of k. Here is the value of f of k. Okay, It's not a 0. If my remainder would have been 0, then we would have said it is a 0. Okay. Let's try this next one here. Okay, I'm going to go about it exactly the same way. So 1... 2, negative 1, 6. Again, it's already given to me in that form, so I don't have to change the sign. Bring down the 1. Negative 3 times 1 is a minus 3. Uh, 2 minus 3 is a minus 1. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. Negative 1 plus 3 is a positive 2. Multiply negative 3 times 2, negative 6. What is my remainder? My remainder is 0. So is it a 0? Yes, because f of negative 3 ends up being 0. Okay, And that right there, guys, is 3.2.